G'day punters, welcome to episode 20 of the Ned's NRL Punting Podcast. What a treat it is to have you back for another week of all things rugby league. We love a preview, we absolutely love a hot take, and we love finding a winning multi as well. My name's Jared Timms, with me as he is each and every week, 60 games for the Broncos, three each for the Kangaroos, the rock Maroons, on. and the Indigenous All-Stars. Yeah, rock on guys, it's good to be here. It's true. It's good to be yeah. back, it's good to be back. Also yeah. with us as he is each and every week. It's Ned's very own Hello, stats Chris. and number. Oh, oh, oh. Spoiler, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, Chris. Well, this is our very own stats and numbers man, the form guide fondler, Ryan Cook. Episode 20. How 20. Already at 20. Where, is it, where is it gone? It, right. uh, yeah, well, too many for uh, for some people by the looks of things. What is wrong with this picture right now? <laughs> well, we're if miss- you're, well, if you're listening, you wouldn't know. <laughs> but if you're watching, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. missing one integral We've lost a soldier. Yeah. We have lost a soldier. Yeah. 19 rounds in. Chris Gary, gone ACL. from the Neds. Gone NR- for the yeah, year. He's gone for the year. He's done for the year. He's he's threw in the he's threw in the towel, boys. Fail, fail. Unfortunately for us, huge result for the great man, though. He's picked up a job with the federal government, which means his time at the Neds NRL punting podcast has come to an end. Oh, it's what a job. For those people <laughs> listening, what were you just doing then? Oh, <laughs> pretending to vomit. <laughs> no, uh, look, we've absolutely loved having Chris on, of course. There probably isn't a better hot take merchant no, in rugby no. league. No, there isn't. The uh, punters absolutely love taking him on. What a get he was for us as well. Walkley winner, you know. Yeah, it's... It's, it's a sad day. I mean, we didn't even get to say goodbye to him we, properly. We, did, yeah. we didn't even yeah. get to have our lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't true, even yeah. go to have lunch that day. We're still going to have the lunch, but you're not invited now, Chris. Oh, well, he still can come, but... <laughs> You've got to pick up the tap. He might who, have security Who's the best something? dressed man on the podcast now? That's the question. Oh, well, oh. That's probably, who's got the white girl Instagram? Because oh. 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 he, he took the cake in both it's departments. It's definitely not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we clearly won because I ain't way. My Instagram is just a collection of jokes from the last 10 years. Yeah. It's like that. It's, uh, yeah, it's okay. not me. It's definitely, well, what it might be you. Yeah. What was your favourite thing about Chris, Ryan? Just his insight. Yeah. He, he brought so much to this team. His weekly scoops, you know, he still had that, that yeah, journalist I, I, touch. I, you know, yeah, I think I just loved him being a journo. You yeah. know, he just didn't change his ways, like, for anything. And um, I, I, I say that in the nicest way. I love his opinions. He's just, yeah, he had very strong opinions on, on, on what he thought, and that's, you know, that's why he was here and he's going to be missed. Yeah, he really will. It will be impossible to mm. fill the gap. I'm actually, I'm actually going to miss... The pun is spraying him. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what I'm going to miss that's, the most. Yes. Good I'm going to miss you guys <laughs> just absolutely giving it to him every week. So yeah. um, take your pick. Uh, there's a new candidate up for grabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well, that was going to be my next question. Well, firstly, on behalf of all three of us, Chris, thanks very much for your time. Yeah. We will miss you we for miss the end you, of the season. We know you'll be tuning onwards in every week. Onwards and upwards yeah. for you. Good luck with everything. What do we do now? Is it just the three of us for the rest of the season? I don't know. Mm. Do we do we do we make some calls and we do we get some call ups each week? What do we do? Celebrity death match. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My yeah. idea was sort of a bit more of a Hunger Games style thing. Yeah. Just Ooh. get maybe eight or ten really good Brisbane based journalism <laughs> candidates and have them fight to the death. Well, it'd be right hard up. to find them. That itself would be great content. <laughs> it would be yeah. <laughs> very hard to find. I them. think everyone's seen the reaction that Chris got on the socials too, and who could possibly want to throw themselves straight into that? Who wouldn't want to be called a flog times twenty <laughs> every well, week? I I don't think any other journo could probably take that apart from Chris, Gary. So yeah. Thick skin. Um, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Well, what I think we will do, though, is it's just the three of us this week, of course. From next week, mm. there's only about <laughs> six weeks left until the final. So my idea was we'll try and find one new person each week up till the final. I like it. Give them a trial. And then the winner, they get the spot for the finals. What do you I, think? I think that's I think that's the best way to do it. Okay. I like it. I like it yeah. a lot. Watch this space for next week. Spoiler warning, we've locked absolutely no one <laughs> yet. <so. laughs> All right, guys, let's get into a little bit of footy. Uh, look, the last oh, a couple of weeks ago, Reese Walsh signed with the Broncos yeah. instead of the Dolphins. That was the big thing that we chatted about then. That, of course, means he's not going to be at the Warriors at the end of the season. Now, he's already been relegated to 14 at the Warriors. Mm. In place of him, Chanel harris Savita also leaving the Warriors at the end of the season. So would it be smart, Gerald, for Reese uh, Walsh? I was going to say Robson then. He won't be granted a release. <laughs> Will it be smart for Reese Walsh to be granted a release from the Warriors? I I think it would be. But does he go to the Broncos straight away? That's, that's the question that I'm asking as well. The murmurs I've heard this week is that the Storm will be interested to cover a Ryan Pappenhausen. Well, they don't have – I mean, who did it? Tavita Pangajit Jr. did it last year for the yeah. Penrith. Um, I, 
I think this is only a very new thing, this loaning out. Yeah, it's a very, you know, soccer football thing to do. Mm. You know, you, you you loan out your players. You do it. You do it with a lot of your younger players. Obviously, in the English Premier League, they get loaned out to to lower grades, and they instead of obviously not playing any first team football, they get football under their belt. I think with the Broncos, if they were to say you could take him back, I would send him to Melbourne. You would. I would. I yeah. would because right now we've got a great you know, dynamic in the in the spine that's going. I mean, we've got Tessie and Tamari Martin who are fighting out for the fullback position who, you know, probably won't get that position next year because he's going to be there. But just leave it at the moment. Let them play because they're playing great football. Let them fight out. Send him down there and let him play some good footy. I mean, under Craig Bellamy, like Billy Slater is down there as well. He does a bit with the their, their fullbacks. Like it would be the right thing to do to send him, send him down there. Is, do you know Reese Walsh very well? I do, yeah. Yeah. Is he the sort of bloke who would potentially go to Melbourne, realise how good it is in Melbourne, and then not want to go to the Broncos? Yeah, no, nah, I think Reese is, Reese is a bit of a homebody. Okay. Uh, the reasoning why he's not – I mean, Melbourne's like <laughs> – Auckland, you know, it's a whole different, it's cold, it's different, it's completely different to Brisbane, uh, you know, where, you know, he spent most of his time at Redcliffe where, they, where they've where they played. So, yeah, I, I don't think he would do, I don't think he's that type of guy. Uh, I mean, the contract's already been signed as well. Mm. Can he do a backflip? I mean, it's been done before. Well, it has been done before. It has been done why, before. Yeah, so it probably comes down to the character of the bloke rather yeah, than whether I, or look, not I, it can be done. I think he's, I think he's a young, he's a, he's an honest young man. He's not caught up in the system yet. So, you know, we get a bit older and you get a bit of a, you know, a sense of what's going on around you and you make your own decisions, i.e. Daily Cherry Evans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you he know, made you, the right decision. Oh, well, he did. He did. <laughs> he did make the right decision. Yeah. Is there whispers that Foz, is might, that Foz might be doing that as well? Oh, I mean, he'd be, oh, he'd be smart. Oh, I'm looking I don't straight know. down Am the I, barrel of the camera for the YouTube watchers have right I now. Just, he'd be smart too. <laughs> have, I just, have I just said something that I shouldn't have? Oh, but I'm, well, we need someone to break <laughs> stuff in Chris Gary's absence. Yeah. Well, so I'm is that what's happening Well, I'm hearing. Even if it's a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm hearing there's a lot of chat from, from down that way that Kieran Form would – is is very keen to stay. He and I would think, be very smart. So. And the only reason I think the deal didn't go forward is because Ches had a contract that he had to sign to, to take him out to his. So Daly's got his money. Everyone's happy there. I don't know. I know Ches is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does he do a backflip? Does Foz do a backflip? I mean, I know you'd like to see that. I would absolutely like to see that. We were just talking about this actually <laughs> off air just before we started too, and the improvement on Manly's side where foreign players. Listen to well. him. Listen to him. He's getting excited. Oh, just, you really have got me up. He's locking in the top right? eight. Well, I, I, I was feeling pretty flat about the Chris stuff, and here we are. I have heard. I have heard some Ooh. some whispers that he's he would he would like he he really wants to stay. So. Watch this space. Oh, yeah, please. I'm, <laughs> Look at him. I'm fixated on this space. I'm glad this, I'm glad this, uh, this uh, computer's here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Back to that. Yeah, why is the table working? <laughs> right. um, back to the Broncos chat and the Reese Walsh chat. Now that he will be going to fullback, testing you was excellent the other day and Tamare Martin was mm. the other one that you were talking about fullback. Is Selwyn Cobo going to be stuck on the wing there forever? I, look, I don't think at the moment, and if you've ever met Selwyn, he's not a type of – He's he don't, he doesn't talk. He's not a very out, outspoken person. And and then the spine and fullback position. If you'd met Reese, you'd understand. You'd met Tessie there. They're very vocal uh, yeah. when they're on the field. And yeah, I just don't see him moving there in the next two to you know two. What did he signed two twenty five. So yeah. I don't see him moving in that position. I don't think that counts him out for the future. But I just don't think we see that he's not what he's nineteen years old. You know he's he's signed for another three years. That'll bring him to 23, 22. Like he yeah. could still put, he could take that opportunity and, you know, still, he still go, he'll still play Origin. He'll still learn, you know, some great stuff with Billy Slater while he's there. He'll probably ask the question about, you know, what would you do in these missions? And even the, in, in those positions, you've got Kale and Ponga and Queen. So he's still got a lot of learning to do. And he's, you know, I, I, I would love – he's a big body. I'd love to see him move into the centres. Um, yeah, fair. Well, you know, that's probably an easier move yeah, initially, it, isn't it? it? Well, I think work rate-wise, yes. Yeah. Defensively, I think centre is probably one of the hardest positions to fair. defend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, you know, like he'll be 22 when, when he finishes contract. So I don't want to rush him. I just think we just we – just, just let him have, just let him play footy at the moment and I think – Having the spine like at the moment, I don't know if you guys know soccer, but you know Ajax, you know Ten Hager, he was over and they 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 bring up the best young player. I feel like the Broncos are doing that right now. I feel like they're putting a group of young men together that are just super talented, mm. that are going to go and play together for a long period of time and have that mindset of 
I don't want to take any money. I don't want to take bigger money anywhere else. I want to stay here for a while. It's sort of like Penrith, what Penrith have done, you know. They want to stay together. So it's exciting if you're a Brisbane Broncos fan and a member, like you'd be so excited for the next five years and where the club's going. Do you have much of a relationship with Selwyn? Oh, not a huge, like not, I wouldn't say I would have, go have coffees with him, but if I needed to have a relationship, yeah, I would, I, I think I could, um, both being Indigenous boys. Uh, I think it's a lot easier when you have that cultural advantage mm. and, the, you know, that, yeah, that closeness. So, you know, he's a great young man. He's very quiet. He's very different. Yeah. I was just going to see if he knew how he's doing after Origin, after his head knock, because I know he's out this week. Yeah, he's not. Uh, well, I, I don't think, I don't think it's it's rocked him too bad. I seen him after the game. He he was looking after himself. That's for sure. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, but I, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be fine for the rest of the year. And you, you, those type of hits, you don't get a, you don't get them much. That was, that was a it was a huge accident. So, yeah, yeah I think he'll be okay. Uh, with a spare seat at this desk now as well. We also mm. want to know if you know him well enough to get him on the Neds NRL <laughs> yeah. podcast. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> uh, probably, uh, probably not. Yeah. He, he's, we go would, have the coffee first. I don't think we'll, we look, I don't think we'll get as much. I don't think we'll get much out of him. I think he'll nod and That's say fair. yes and no. That's fair. It doesn't work so much for a, a, a an audio recording. Either. No, no. Um, Joseph Manu, clearly a star of the future. Look, just going from strength to strength. He's in career best form this season. The last month, he's played three positions yeah. at the Roosters and the Kiwis: centre, fullback, five eighth. What is he? He's a he's a half. Just a really yeah. good football. He's player. a half oh, for me. Yeah. Well, at that club, sorry. If you put him, like he's not going to play fullback at the Roosters. Yeah. And the Roosters, Uncle Nick's gonna, not going to want to lose him. If Luke Keery has one more head knock, unfortunately, I, I just think that he probably needs to hang him up yeah. because it's it's for the best for him. I know. It, look, I know perfectly. No footy player wants to hear anyone tell you what to do, but it's it's scary. Like. You, if you, the more head knocks you get, look, I mean, look at, um, what's his name? Tongue, like Alan Al, Al Tongue, like he's just, he's not the best now. He's, he, you know, he gets dizzy all the time. He had a lot of head knocks. It's, it's something that. He and, wore headgear too. Yeah. And, but yeah. the thing is like this, it's, it's the, the contact sport these days is so much bigger. Yeah. And the, the blokes are so much bigger. So back to Joseph Manu, he's a, he's an out and out halfback. Like, like he had spiders on him on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Like they just couldn't tackle him. And, when you have someone like Walker, you know, taking that other role, that you know, initiative to to play footy, I think Joseph Manu is a is an out and out for you know five A. Yeah, I think he's that's his position. Give it to him. He's not going to obviously go anywhere else because he loved he, he loves the Roosters. I mean, will he go somewhere else to play fullback? I don't think so. I, don't, I just don't think that's his character. Yeah, I think he'll stay, and I think. They've already got a plan in place. They must have because Luke Keery is obviously coming towards the end of of his career with with what's happened to him. So put him in there. I mean, he's hard to handle. And haven't they? When he's been in that position, haven't haven't they played well? Yeah. Like he's just he's just been amazing. And watching him play in that fullback position that that does nothing but help him in the in the halfback position because it's a spine position. He comes back to the club level if he if he wants uh, and, and plays in the in the halfback in the in the halves and, and he does a great job. He was the schoolboy a few seasons ago that the Roosters had to get special special dispensation from, wasn't it? Like yeah. because he was too young. Yeah, yeah. When no, that, they wanted was to that, select him, is that was that him? No, that was Joseph Swali. Oh, was that, that was Joseph Swali. Oh, right, okay, all right. Yeah, I've right. confused the two no, of them. That's okay. There. It's, it's okay. the Joseph. That's why I'm here. Man. Cut Roosters. from the same cloth, yeah. basically. Yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah. And then on, just on him, jeez. Yeah. I mean, thank goodness he is a New South Wales. But the other thing is, I thought Manu was up until this season. I thought he should have played game three. So Ali, yeah, yeah. I, I just, you know, it's a bit late now, but there'll probably be know. a new coach, and surely listening to the Neds NRL punting podcast, there'll surely be a new coach for New South Wales. Well, we will find out. I feel a bit bad for Freddie, but you can't make that many, cho- you know, decisions, um, and you, you know, have that outcome. So. Yeah, unfortunately. He could be sitting here next week. Yeah, well, the seat's open. Yeah. The, the seat's price open. is could. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually pulled these stats of Manu just before we move on to something else from our friends at Rugby League Riders. I know this is a you thing no, usually, for it. Ryan, but, you know, it, up is down. This Cut my week. lunch, go. Yeah, you know, <laughs> cats chase dogs, everything, anything goes in <laughs> round 20. Um, look, Joseph Manu in the last month, two tries, four try assists, four line breaks, seven line break assists, 33 tackle busts, yeah, wow. 850 running I would, I would yeah. say that most of those tackle breaks would be him in the middle yeah. because it's tired for – like he, had a, he, was, he was having a field day. Like he, he just – it just looked like he felt comfortable there. Having hands on the ball, like he's not a guy who catches it on his chest when he plays in that role. He's got both – he can flick past both hands. He can pass both, both ways. I mean, 
what half is how big he is and does what he does. There's not there's not really there's not many in the game. So yeah, he's a he's a special footy player. And if he if if they if they mould him into that position for next year, they're going to be a pretty hard team to beat in the Roosters. Who do you think the breakout player of the season has been? Him? Ooh. Is he? Would you consider him a breakout player? I mean, I know he's been pretty good and, and improving since he's come yeah. in, but he's having you could, a you could argue Selwyn. Selwyn, 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 Selwyn. Selwyn. I mean, yeah. without look, without Ryan Pappenhausen, um, you know, we we already knew we had a glimpse of him last year, but in, he, you know, he's taken on that position now. He's it was if yeah, if he just if he had stayed healthy this year, he, he probably he probably goes close to winning the Dally M. Mm, like yeah. he's he's that special and. Like I've spoken to a lot of doctors. I was speaking to a lot of you know uh, physios and doctors about what happened to him on the weekend. Yeah, it's not good. Like yeah. having a fractured kneecap, and you know I seen a post on him to get down, knocked down seven times, get get back up eight. It's these things are that mate. These things are the moment they need to document this. Yeah, because if he comes back, because I can tell you this, he's going to have pain for the rest of his career. Because you don't having pins in your knees. It's like having pins in your ankles. It's yeah. they're full weight bearing. It's not easy to get around. And if they need to document this, um, so if you listen, Melbourne, document this. If he comes back bigger and better than ever and plays out, plays the next season out of his skin, I don't know. They've done a great job um, because it's a it's a really hard. Um, uh, who was it? David Huller for the Brisbane Broncos. His patella exploded and his kneecap fractured, uh, and we well, never played footy again. So, yeah, he's obviously got a, le le a lot less weight on him, <laughs> Ryan Pappenhausen, than um, Big Dave Huller did. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it'd be pretty special to see him come back and, and, and play a, you know, longevity and, and have a great career because it's a, it's a pretty hard injury. Leg injury is obviously very, very debilitating. Mm. And I don't think people really consider it as much as they should. Now, you can attest to that more than anyone. Do you mm. still have problems? Like, even oh, yeah. just like not being an elite athlete these days, it's, with all due respect. No, no, it's it's <laughs> it's especially when, you know, you like I'm not I'm not um privy to, you know, all this physio every single day and, mm. and getting looked after every single day. So it's the cold weather too, like, well, some days I wake up and I get up at four AM to go obviously to go to radio and, and I get in my cold showers and I do I, I do my thing, but it's yeah, it still gives me grease. I've actually had thoughts about just I'm not even like this. I know you think I'm taking the piss, just cutting the, cutting my foot off because of because of the pain, you know. Now, and still, yeah, yeah, and it's I can either get a rod put up my heel and that'll it'll fuse my ankle mm. and means I won't have pain, but it'll throw my hips out later later down the track and my back. And so I've honestly the only thing that's made me not do it is because um, you heard of this thing called phantom um, pain. So what happens is your brain is so used to your, your brain is so used to knowing that you have that pain wow. that it never goes away anyway mm. so i've had this pain for what 11 years now it's just my brain will always remember that i've just been it's been painful so all it will think is Oh, your, your foot's hurting. But I don't have a foot if, it's, if I cut a little bit. It happens to people who amputate all the time who, or who have accidents. You know, I've, I've, I've been to hospitals with a, with a copper who lost his leg mm. and he's still met, seen him then um, and then seen him like two years down the track and he still he, he still tries to scratch his thighs and he's there's nothing there to scratch. That's interesting. So yeah. for my brain, that really, it messes with my head. That's the only reason I think I could do it. Otherwise, I probably would have done it already. Yeah, right. So it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I mean, my injury is very, very different to, you know, Ryan Pappenhausen. So don't put us in the same category in, in that sense. But that injury for him is still a lot to come back from. One of my favourite bits of the week, if not my absolute favourite bit of the week, punters' responses to the content that we put out after oh, each. We're going to miss it though because Chris is <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. not here anymore. A few less times being called flog, but I'm still sure. I mean, we can at least live off it one last yes. time this week. I can call you that to your face if you yeah, really want. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> More often. Um, let's start with the video that you two boys did, uh, which halfback will be picked for Australia yeah. this year, the World Cup. Gerard, you locked in DCE on the back of his At this origin moment performance. In time, 100%. Like, yeah. And yeah. most people agree with you. Yeah. Jared, you went Nathan Cleary. You called out DCE for not winning a premiership in 10 years. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it stings. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> um, I picked out a couple of comments here. There, there weren't too, too many bad ones, yeah. um, but Bill Cromto has said, Nathan was the weak link in the first game and then again in the third. So let's just let him grow up. Oh, I mean, Shots fired. I mean, grow up. I mean yeah. it's not it's not a bad thing. Like we said, if he if he goes on that tour, I mean he's gonna go on the tour. But if he's behind Ches, and I mean it's not a bad thing for him. He's the other thing is he this is his first what second origin series was his second origin series? Who clear it? Yeah, no, nah, he's been in for three or three, four now. Three, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, they, yeah. this is his first 
World Cup. Yeah. It's a very different scenario to be in a World Cup. Different highs, different lows, you know, different scenarios. Pressure wise, may not be, but you've got to you've got to prepare differently. You're overseas, you're in a different country. So it might be better for him to go, play those Tot, slight easier games, get into the feel of the Australian jersey and and, and learn off the you know the the main guys in your, in your Benny Hunts your, and and your Daily Cherry Evans. Having him as a backup over there, it's, we could rack up some yeah. absolute. Well, this is what I mean. Here, like it's not honestly. Like <laughs> I still remember when I went on my four nations. Like we had Cooper Cronk, John, uh, Jonathan Thurston. Um, Darren Lockie at like, yeah. so you know, Kronk like sitting on the bench. Yes, Kronk, Kronk <laughs> sitting on the Kronk not playing sometimes yeah, because wow. we played um, a hooker to, for, to give Cam a rest, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's not a bad thing. I think people got to understand he's still young and I think Bill, is that his name? Uh, Bill, Bill, yeah, Bill. Bill's correct. Good mate, let, him, Bill. let him let him go up a bit. He's twenty four. <laughs> like he he's got a lot of footy in him, and he's gonna he'll be better for the run. There are a few people actually saying why not pick Ben Hunt, but uh, anyway, Reed Johnson says DCE Nathan is bloody good, but Dally is a leader, and Mal isn't going to pick the Panthers team to tour. They just lost the Origin. Dally Cherry Evans all day. I like him. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I just think it's 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 Mal. I, I know there's a Queensland bias there. They think there's a bias there, but Mal is a guy who will pick what he sees. He's not going to – he if he thinks oh, Nathan Clear is a be better pick, he'll pick him. Mm -hmm. But spine-wise, when you look at Cameron Munster, he's not going to put Nathan Clear with Cameron Munster. He's going to put Daly Cherry Evans. I was really surprised, to be honest. When we filmed that video, I thought this will be a pretty close to 50-50 split. Mm -hmm. It's like 80-20. Mm -hmm. It honestly. is, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of – it sounds like there's a lot of – there's obviously some New South Wales people agreeing as yeah, well. Yeah. And and you know, they I, I suppose sometimes I don't watch the New South Wales team because it's just not what I'm watching. So if you're a fan of that side, you obviously watch them a, a lot deeper and harder in, in, in thought. So they're seeing things that I don't see um, and the mistakes he's made. Like I thought he still played well. I thought he was a huge threat every single game. So they're obviously seeing things that I don't see. Moving on, we also did a video last week when Chris was still here talking mm. about which players won't play Origin again next year, and this one got a bit more feisty. <laughs> we all agreed that Crichton and Talakai probably won't, um, and I think Chris also threw in Tupo, he if did. I remember correctly. Ooh, yeah. So Tony Holani has said, everyone sees the mistakes that Tupo done, but what about all the hard running the lad did? It's true. Yeah. He, he did a lot of, he did yeah. a lot of big meters. I mean, if we're talking about anyone, I mean – how quiet was Brian? Like, like, honestly, I don't remember Brian Toto doing anything no, in the last game. Brian Toto has been quiet all season. Like, yeah. even for the – I know he missed the first month or so in injury, but yeah. even for the Panthers. You know, and you know why I've got this vision of why I think we stay away from him? Because mm. he's the nice guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, honestly, yeah. no one wants to spray Brian Toto because he's the genuine nice guy who, you know – Goes to church like he's like he's a you know he's yeah, a beautiful yeah. he's a beautiful yeah, young yeah. man. Just a no great one, bloke. Yes, yeah, it's a great bloke. No one wants to go at him, and I think yeah. we probably we probably held off him a little bit. He was I don't even remember him playing that last game. He didn't. He wasn't involved in much. So I mean, you could probably tell me a bit more, Ryan. Probably next week, and there's probably going to be some people spray me and look up some stats. <laughs> but it felt like he was really quiet. Well, I tipped him pretty much every game to score a try, and yeah. yeah. That, I think that only well, happened in game two. Over, yeah, he got game one, two, I think, I think yeah. didn't he? Yeah. But wingers, you should be scoring at least, you know, two in, 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 a, in a series. Luai, should, should yeah. him in the Origin yeah, series. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Filet Fuiava has said, and this is a good one, how many origins at this table? And then <laughs> another punter has weighed in on our behalf and said, so Jamie Lietiki has said three. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he say? Has he come back? No, yeah, that's here after that, that's I'm it. sure, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, Anzac Ngartai has said, aside from Gerald, who are these other flops? <laughs> flops is such a good word. See, and we miss is, you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> this is the other thing. Oh, like people see me as a nice, like I'm oh, no lie. Yeah. People see me as a yeah. nice guy, so you're the Brian yeah. of this, uh, oh, this. I'm not battle. that nice, don't <laughs> worry. Well, it gets better. Here we go. John Marks has said, "How about the award for the biggest nobody out of the three who aren't Chiral Yao Yi?" <laughs> Z Main has said, "These blokes will get smacked in a run in a run at straight with a year nine. I, like, I think that's my favourite one. <laughs> I get around that. Oh, gee. <laughs> Desmond Patrick Mahoney has said. I doubt if any of this panel were even reserved ball boys in their lives. So that includes you, mate. Yeah, yeah. no. And I, you know what? I wasn't, a, I've never been a ball boy before. <laughs> Confirmed. So <laughs> um, one nil to you, sir. <laughs> a couple more. Morris Ekaroma has said, these guys definitely met at the local dog park and just started recording their conversations. 
Jeez, we'd have to have, have some money. No. We'd have to have some money to put this set up. <laughs> and uh, back to the footy, Christian Green has said, I think what's largely overlooked in New South Wales, we're missing three of the most potent attackers in the game in Turbo, Latrell and Pappenhausen. Add Josh Adokar to that and you're using a second string side. Mm. Well, that's not our fault that you didn't pick Josh Adokar. <laughs> yeah. And the other boys, we can't help, you know, that they didn't get, didn't get chosen. So, yeah. look – Origins, like I said last week, it's all it's about moments. And no matter who was going to play in that game at Suncorp Stadium, it was going to be a cracker. All like it was always going to be a cracker. All you can do is play the team that's in front of you yeah, as 100%. well, and that's what Queensland did. And you know what? Um, I don't think Brad's going and, and going, oh, I didn't play, you know, we lost because I didn't play Tommy and, you know, and well, he's definitely not saying Josh had a car because he's <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah. But He's died on that hill for sure. But, I, I you know, it's just, this, it's just the way it was. All right, boys. Is that it? That's it. That's it. Let's get into some betting. This is The Offload. All right, guys, some things never change. One thing that we can always rely on week in, week out is the form guide, Fondla. Mm. He's got all of the stats, mm. everything that we need to hear after and before. So let's kick it off with a don't argue. Let's go, boys. Look, this one's nice and easy this week. Alex Johnston quickly turning into one of the great morals each and every week. You're getting about $1.80 for him any time against the Dogs last week. But, hey, $11.50 for the hat trick if you don't mind. More importantly, though, he also scored his 155th NRL try, surpassing former Rabito Nathan Merritt on the all-time list. He's now just three shy of Josh Morris. Drell, I just asked you off air if you know Johnston personally. Does this is this something that he thinks about this this try scoring list? Do you know? Or? No, I don't think it is. Uh, I know he's got a very dry humour and try celebrations. He he done a, he done a few on the weekend, didn't he? He did. He he did he, he did a it was a pretty it was a pretty cool one. But he's a he's just a prolific try scorer. Like I just can't put it. I in I would say in my era, Brett Morris, I would have had to say was the hardest person I ever came up against. I unfortunately didn't get to play enough against uh, you know Alex Johnson, but I could imagine there would have been some great rivalries with with him. He's he knows how to find the line, and I mean, what's the What's what's the highest um, try score of all time? Who's the highest try score of all time in a season? In a season? Oh, no, in no ever. Like ever. he's. I think it's Ken uh, Irvine. Uh, I've got it. It. I mean, like way out. If we can find that when we Ken get Ken Irvine, two hundred and twelve yeah. tries. Uh, Bill, uh, yeah. Billy Slater, one hundred and ninety. Yeah. Steve okay. Menzies, one hundred and eighty. And what is what is he on? Menzies. What is Alex Johnson on? He's on one hundred and fifty-five. So, so one hundred and fifty-five. I reckon he's got three three years in him. Yeah. And he's scoring what fourteen tries a game a year. Yeah. I mean, he's going to go very close. To being right up there, and it's—I mean, he's got—they've got a great backline, obviously, but he scored some outstanding tries himself. So, he's, I mean, he's good for the—he's good for the money. He's obviously. done so consistently over such oh. a long period of time as well. Great one to have on your side in yep. betting. Who are our punters' pals this week? Kyle Felt. Any time uh, he's been you know, quietly on fire yeah. the last six or so weeks, having now scored seven combined tries in his last six games. What? Sharks fans should know him pretty well. He's now scored in four straight appearances against Cronulla. You're getting $2.20 anytime last week. Yeah. Mike Acevo is back on the scene. Red hot form since returning in round 14, making up for some lost time with a try in three of his last five games. Um, he's extended his try scoring streak against New Zealand to four straight games after scoring last week. Uh, Gerald, how do the Broncos stop this man tomorrow night? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, they're, obviously they get a lot of cattle back. Uh, with obviously a lot of their origin boys, but he's a huge threat. I mean that that edge with uh, Walker Blake. I mean mm. they're they're very dangerous. Um, I, w- I would say is that their that's their left edge. Mm. I mean it's going to be a great battle between Walker and uh, Katoni Stags. Uh, it's going to be. I mean my money's m- to win that one. I think personally, I think Walker Blake's probably the most athletic in the competition. I still think he's underrated. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. I don't think he's – they've shown potential for being at Parramatta. Mm. If he went somewhere else, it would really show how good he is, I think. So, yeah, I, it's going to be tough to stop That's that that left edge there. They're both, they're both very good at finishing and um, I think uh, Tones, you know, at times he can have laps in, in defence. So it's going to be a great matchup. It's it's not a bad way to kick off the, uh, you know, the round. Absolutely. Sivo actually scored a hat-trick against the Broncos last year. So you're getting well, 12, be happening this $12 week. in that market. Uh, the next one's Joey Manu, who we've already spoken plenty about, but he loves playing the Dragons. He's now scored in four of his last five games against St. George. Cashed the double just after halftime last week at 11 bucks. It's always a crack of that game as well. Like mm. always a cracker when those two come together. When they played the last 
Was it the Anz- was it the Anzac yeah. one they played early yeah. in the year and it went down to the wire? So I reckon that's going to be tight. So for the punters, some yeah. good back and forth footy. Yeah. This next one's probably not surprising, but it is interesting. Seabus Super Stadium, the favourite, has now won twenty straight games on the Gold Coast, which says probably a lot more about the Titans than anything. <laughs> yeah. mm. But it's significant though because the Titans are still to play Canberra. Your Sea Eagles, Timsey, and Newcastle at home. So Wooden that's, spoon. Yeah? Yeah. Do you reckon they'll come last? Yeah. 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 I just they I just think they're lost. It's just I what is the answer for them as well? Last year they make the finals. They're probably unlucky not to beat the Roosters yeah. in week one. The sky actually looked to be the limit this season, and they just could not have regressed more. The sky is far from it. Yeah. The wooden spoon. That's They've where got, they'll be. Jamal Fogarty, clearly a lot better than what everyone thought he was. Yeah. And Sexton just not coming on like they thought yeah. he would. I thought there was a couple of moments in that game last week that were a little bit hard done by, especially in those last few minutes. I thought they should have had a couple of six agains and they didn't get them. And then that try that was disallowed, I was like, oh. Hosking got one disallowed as yeah. well. You know, like it's – I think the refs are – sometimes they make some terrible calls. Yeah, that's we're it. We're not getting fined from not saying that. We don't get fined. <laughs> well, yeah. We're not Thank part goodness. of the NRL as yeah. far as I'm aware. So <laughs> we'll soon find out, I suppose. <laughs> uh, moving on. The other one, we spoke I think last week about – uh, the Sharks and the Storm being a rivalry. But I also think the Raiders and the Storm is also a bit of a rivalry. So the Raiders at Amy Park, they've now covered in four straight games against the Storm in Melbourne, plus 11 and a half underdogs last Sunday. We did see some news come out of Canberra yesterday that the Raiders have extended Ricky Stewart through to 2025. What do you think about this? Do you, do you think this is a club that's heading towards a rebuild and should they be making that kind of decision? Or I don't know. I, I Look, to be honest... I, ne- I never know what the Raiders, you know, I just feel so, like I don't hate the Raiders, but I don't like them. Like I just don't I have anything good to say about them. They're the, the most meh team in the that's, league. And that's the thing. Yeah. And, you know, if they had won that grand final, you know, against the, against the Roosters, we, we'd probably be talking differently. Yeah. But that's that's the difference, you know, between, I just, I don't know, is it boring to keep, look, I think Ricky's obviously, he's obviously doing the right thing. He's a very old school coach. Mm. Do they need... They've had a lot of old school coaches come through there. Do they need a, a bit more of a technical coach to go through there to to make them a better side? Because you can tell they play, you know, tough footy. But I just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not what you said. Man, I'm not he's really worried. A, he's about a him. club legend. They haven't won a premiership in a long time, and the closest they went mm. was with him at the yeah. helm. I unfortunately think he has the job as long as he wants. Yeah. The well, job, he said honestly. he doesn't want to coach against the Raiders. So yeah. Well, he's loyal to the soil to borrow a term from you, Gerard. Yeah. Which, which, it's it's good to see. I mean, look, we we go on and we spray these. I think a coach. I think coaches get. It's the hardest job to have, man. Like, and we can sit here and spray him as much as you want and say, yes, it's a great idea. No, it's a great bad idea. to to keep him but I mean if he's happy there and the Raiders are happy it's a great remedy keep him then yeah what what has changed though he coached three other clubs before he coached yeah. the Raiders so now he doesn't want to coach well I don't think the he Raiders. had the opportunity then given the opportunity yeah, well yeah. yeah so yeah. is that what it is or is that just a way that something that you say to try and, and save it, your yeah. job repaying the loyalty I guess <laughs> I don't and know. I think yeah. if you're a Raiders fan you know you're probably going I'd rather see Ricky at the helm than, than someone we don't know yeah mm. absolutely so I think if they went away from their traditions then you know, and they're a very traditional club. You know, you probably you probably argue that they've lost it, but uh, I don't. I mean, like I said about their footy and where they're going, I'm not really. They don't really excite me a lot all the time. They play tough footy, but I don't see them threatening year in year out. Um, but I'm happy for him. I almost think they're in their own little bubble down there sometimes, yeah. and they forget about the rest of the footy world. Um, yeah. Moving on, round 19 tips. Jerome Hughes, he brings up game 100 on Saturday night against the Bunnies. Oh. Look, he's only scored once against them in six games. You're getting $4 any time there. I love Jerome Hughes for any time trial score. Yeah, well. and I love a milestone bet as well. Yeah. Um, Scorey Oates, brilliant form before the origin break. Yep. Double in back-to-back games. He's well-rested. $2 any time, $5.80 for the double Easy against the that. Eels. Yeah. Any bad beats this week, Ryan? Just the one we took. The, uh, the Rabbitohs, minus eight and a half. They won by only eight in the end after coming back from a two-try deficit. Um, on the flip side, though, you probably owe Latrell Mitchell one. If you back the dogs, he missed uh, a few conversions to help them cover. Only six-ish weeks until the finals. How mm. are the futures markets looking now? It's interesting. So as you'd expect, the Storm of $4.50 out to 7 bucks. The Cowboys, even though they lost last week, $9 into $7.50. Sharks, $10 into 8 And the Bronx, 21 into 17 again. They were 51 at the start of the year. Yeah. Mm. Guess who got on them? I was going to say. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
I'm, I'm, the more they play, and it's just exciting that they're winning without their good players. Like, that's what I'm excited Look about. Look forward to saying that. Yeah. And don't tell them it's so no. the final <laughs> week. <laughs> yeah. Surely back to a full round of games last week, Ryan. We had a few mm. mad multis lob. We had Look, this one's really good. Um, $2.50 into oh. just under 20. It's the same guy. <laughs> yeah. Every week he's it's just. It's a Jarrell yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> uh, Into just under $2,900. Love so stuff, yeah. Wow. Seven legs, all anytime try scorers. Yeah, he's back. nice. Kick out, Sebastian Chris, Hughes. Pereira, Isaac Targo, Latrell, and Jake Avarillo. Ooh. I didn't realise Sebastian Chris had so much toe, honestly. Yeah. That, yeah. that 90 metre try that he scored last week. Great Roman to watch. sandal, more toe than Roman sandal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. There's our quote <laughs> of the week. Uh, any other bloody good bets? Uh, we had two 20K bets on the Roosters head to head at $1.35. Lots of risk involved. Jeez. Um, 19K on Manly at $1.36. And then we also took 4.4K on Jono anytime at $1.65. Don't hate that at all. Finally, certainly not least, mm. don't tell them is so. I feel like one of you guys had Mulatalu in the multi last week, did you? No, that was a week, was a week before. before. Yeah, okay. yeah. Anyway, so 10K, two leg same game multi, Sharks to win. That's a tick. But he also took Mulatalu anytime. Yeah. Oh. That's pretty uh, we also took 5K on him again anytime and then 6K on the Cowboys to cover. Jeez. Mm. Bad betting. Ouch. Betting. Yeah, I don't know why you – like the Cowboys ones are silly. Mm. I know it's at home, but they didn't have – they were, they were low. On no them. value. Yeah. 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 No, I thought Sharks were a really good bet last week and yeah. it really did come off. Yeah. All right, as always, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, lads. All right, boys, any team versus any team is back for round 19 of the NRL. We've all built one this week, and I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to take the Canterbury Bulldogs to score more points than the Melbourne Storm. They are still favourites in that matchup, but I think the Dogs could put on a pretty big score (laughs) and improve Dogs against um, uh, the Gold Coast Titans Mm. this week. And I think Melbourne will be limited somewhat at least against South Sydney. So $1.75 for the Bulldogs to beat the Storm. I like that. I like that. I'm going to go the Warriors to beat the Tigers. You're getting $1.60 here. I don't buy into what the Raiders are doing. I think it's an overreaction from last week. And the Tigers are playing against the Cowboys, full strength, up in Townsville. Okay. I'll go on the Brisbane Broncos. Taking on the Manly Seagulls, I think Ouch. the Bronx. I think the yeah, sorry. I think the Bronx <laughs> have got points in them against Para. I just think Para can let in some points. I yeah. just honestly do, and I think it'll be a lot tighter than the market show against St George for Manly. So yeah. uh, my bet is Brisbane Broncos uh, taking on the Manly Seagulls. Okay, there you have it, punters. Three suggested for any team versus any team in round nine. Of course, T's and C's apply. They are available on the website. And if you're having a bet, always remember to gamble responsibly. The Neds NRL Punting Podcast Multi. All right, guys, not that we knew it at the time, but it's a shame we couldn't send Chris off a winner with a round 18 multi. Did do a pretty good job of it, though. Two legs from three we got last week. (laughs) Who fell over? You. Did I? Yeah, it was the only one that we didn't get was Dragons to win, and they actually did put on a pretty good performance. They just had 50 points put on the the, Yeah, like the last 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. They just sort of ran away with it at the end. Alas... Ryan, you're in full time now. Oh. So let's get another three legger off the ground. But Don't Gerard, fudge up. <laughs> you have had a crack before. You've had two goes before for one winner and one 50%. loser. So I mean, statistically, it's you're all the, downhill from you're here, the stat man. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, this is the winning podcast, though. You have yeah. a crack on the AFL one every week, and that's always just for a laugh because yeah. they never win. So yeah. this maybe, is the one where we take it maybe seriously. Chris Gary was the person bringing us down, though. Could be. Yeah. Uh, he was early on. Remember, it took him about seven or eight weeks to actually was, get one off the ground. So we nearly had him singing the national anthem, the American national yeah. anthem there one <laughs> we week. Did. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I think his first one, in fact, was that. It yeah. was about round yeah. seven. Yeah. And then we finally got a winning bet over the following <laughs> week. Jarrell, you're up first this week. Yeah, I've just gone the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, good value. I think they're like about two, $2.40 yeah. um, against Parramatta. I think this is a really telling game for the Broncos, you know, and, and their season. Uh, they get f- they've got a full-strength side back, um, apart from, obviously, Tamati Martin um, being there and Tessie New is playing – Pessy News playing great footy, so yeah, I've just gone. I've gone Broncos on the nose to uh, to win against uh, the Parramatta Eels. I think at least momentarily, there's a top four spot on the line for both. And of that's the, the other thing. It's well. a it's a high stake game. I love everything about it. Two dollars forty. Don't 40. hate it at all. I'm up second this week. 
We've spoken about him at length here, and I didn't realise we were going to when I put this tip in. Joseph Manu, anytime try scorer. Yeah, I like that. $2.25. Anytime try scorer. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. So that's my leg. Ryan, um, you're up third this week. Imagine if it came down to this. Jarrell and I both over. It probably will. First time really having a great I like to get out of the blocks really fast. Yeah. yeah that's what my wife You do often. Anyway. Yeah. But. <laughs> Um, <laughs> also in this multi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I'm going the Warriors plus 10 and a half against the Raiders. I just think this line is a massive overreaction to the Raiders beating the Storm last yep. week, but i got a stat for you boys. Okay. I like it. So Canberra has failed to cover the line in each of its last nine matches as a favourite following a win. That's wow. good enough for yeah. me. So when a- we spoke about this off air before as well. The Raiders are not sort of unprone to a very flat performance. This is very as well. true. Yep. All right, Gerald, Broncos to win, $2.40. Jared, Joseph Manu, anytime try score at $2.25. Ryan, Warriors to cover ten and a half, a dollar ninety. Thanks very much, the bookies. Ten dollars. I'll be getting after this one this yeah, week. I, yeah, I really yeah. like the I look feel of this. good about this. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, we love you, Chris, but no oh, Chris. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> but oh, we're sorry. here to make money, and that's what we're doing now. <laughs> Cha-ching. All right, punters. The Neds NRL punting podcast multi is already built for your convenience. It's available under NRL round specials at neds.com.au or on the Neds app. All right, guys, we're nearly there again. We miss you, Chris, but it's time for our final thoughts. I've hardly ever had one this season because it was just dragging on too long with Mm. four of us in here. So I'm having one this week and I'm going to go first. There is about six weeks left until the finals this year. Seven, including this one, actually. Seven, including this one. Okay, makes sense. Uh, I think there's only really three or four premiership threats now, and I'm predicting at this point, we'll go through this properly in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. I reckon we'll pick our eight and our finals. But I'm predicting a Penrith versus North Queensland grand final. It's and big, it's going to be outstanding. It's a big call, but I I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. I do not hate it. My thought on that while you're talking about, you know, premiership favourites, I, I think it's the races. This is where it gets really exciting. Uh, the back end, obviously, Origin's over now. We had that one week where we rest players. This is where we're going to start to see some really, really good football. And um, players are, you know, they're – they're fit. They're ready. They're, they're raring to go. We've, like we said, we've got seven games to go. Obviously, Penrith will take out the uh, the minor premiership. I think it's going to be an exciting finish for the top four, though. Yeah. I mean, we don't see we see we haven't seen Melbourne in this position for a very long time. Yeah. You know, they're sitting fourth with twenty four points, with an equal with the Broncos, Parramatta. One point, two points behind that are the Rabbitohs, who they play this week. It's that's not an easy w- win for them. Mm. They've lost three on the trot. I don't remember the last time they've lost four in a row. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if you have a stat on that, but it, but I think it goes back to maybe 2006 or 2005. Be a long time ago. They, yeah. they, until they've lost. So, How many have they lost in a row now? Three. This will yeah. be the fourth. So they, I did hear on the weekend that this was the first time they lost three in a row since 2014. Yeah. Right so that was nearly – and did I you think, say that before? Yeah, Sorry, no, right? no, yeah. I didn't say that before. Yeah. But I think that I think that builds. I think that gives more pressure to them. Yeah. I, I don't think there's no pressure on the Rabbitohs. This no, weekend. absolutely, not. there's none. It's at their home ground, so you know I'm I'm hoping that obviously the Broncos beat Parramatta this week. The only time the Brisbane Broncos probably would have ever been in front of <laughs> the Storm yeah. was probably since 2000 and I'd say nine or eight. Uh, you know, apart from. Round before round one, when mm. we're, we're with a letter B, so we're right up the top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just yeah. think it's going to be an exciting last seven weeks, and uh, it kicks off this weekend. And um, there's three top four games this weekend, so punters get excited and yeah, enjoy it. The charge to the mm. finals is certainly on. Ryan, what's your final thought? <sighs> Sticking to the ladder, guys. So I, I think this is a huge, huge game for the Eels tomorrow night. There's been a lot of talk again about Brad Arthur, who we've spoken about at length on this podcast about, you know, is the window closing? You know, what do they do next season? They're losing Reed Mahoney and Papali'i next year. I mean, six on the ladder, if they lose – Tomorrow night, that it's getting very interesting. I think the Rabbitohs are playing the best footy, probably of any team at the moment outside of Penrith, obviously. But further down, a loss for the Tigers and the Titans this week means they can't mathematically make the eight, wow. which is just shocking, yeah, isn't it? It's just a long way <laughs> yeah. off from the finals too, isn't it? So start organising those Mad Mondays, boys. Yeah. But Tigers fans, it means you can still finish ninth, so... 
Do, Glass half full. <laughs> <laughs> they do love a ninth finish. They do love a ninth <laughs> finish, don't they? Do you want another final thought, or were you just wrapped into that last one there? No, I was. I was just looking at the um, bottom eight there, and I just <laughs> thought I'd uh, mention your boys as well. Yeah, they're starting to play some good footy as well, Jared. The, the Manly Seagulls coming off obviously an Origin win, Daily Cherry Evans. We spoke about it during the pod uh, about that position up for for grabs in the World Cup. Uh, I think they've. I think they slip in there. Um, they finish in the eight. Yeah, yeah. I think they They're do. They're sitting eighth now. I think, aren't they? they yeah. I, yeah, but I think they finish in there. I think it's going to be a tight race. I think. I think if the Roosters leave Manu in the, in the halves, they probably have a chance too. But I, I, I think Manly can finish seventh, and I, 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 I reckon Parramatta will go if they lose this weekend. Yeah, Parramatta could fall out of the eight. Wow, yeah. I know Imagine that's that. a big call. All of those predictions we've made too, and the amount of times. <laughs> and we've you know what? The most overrated the play that we've said, you know, Mitchell <laughs> Moses, he's actually leading the assists this year with thirty three. Yeah, I did see the start over the weekend. Doesn't mean anything because they're still coming fifth. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing means anything unless yeah. you're lifting the proven summons. Yeah, trophy so that's my season. final thoughts, boys. Um, commiserations to to missing, obviously, Chris Gary. Uh, he will be sorely missed. We, you know, we missed an opportunity wearing our bands today, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> but uh, whoever we have next week, I'm sure they'll get pizzled in the comments. Absolutely. All right, punters. Well, make sure you do come back and join us for episode 21 because someone will be sitting here with us. I don't know entirely who it will be. but Suspense. Uh, the spot Could be you, open. Rich. Could be <laughs> you, Rich. Could be any of you leaving us comments in the, uh, in the social next yeah. week. Who knows? Someone yeah. just really animated pulls themselves out of nowhere. There's a seat, seat here. It's open. Ooh. Well, regardless, it's going to do us, punters. Let us know how we did, just the three of us. Leave us a uh, a review on your favourite podcast platforms. Like, subscribe, find us on the socials, watch us on YouTube, it'd be great. Enjoy the footy this weekend. Of course, if you're having a bet, always remember to gamble responsibly. <laughs>